Hey everyone, welcome to part 10 of the Pokemon game series in Unity. So, in this video we will look at how to add critical hits and type effectiveness into our battle system. So if I do a fire type attack on Bulbasaur, you can see that it is super effective and Bulbasaur lost all its HP. So let's look at how to implement this in our battle system. So if you like the series, please consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like on the video to help this channel grow. So let's start. So for type effectiveness, Pokemon games uses this chart. So here we have the attack types in the row and the different types in the column. So if I take the second row, which is fire, and if a fire move is performed on a fire Pokemon, it is one by two. So one by two here means not very effective. And similarly, if a fire move is performed on water Pokemon, it's also not very effective. And in the case of normal and electric Pokemon, it is white. So white here means normal. There is no positive or negative effects. And finally, for the grass and ice Pokemon, the effectiveness is 2, which means it's, it is super effective. So we need a way of storing the values of this chart in our code. So our Pokemon type enum is in the Pokemon base class. Just below that, I'll create a new class called type chart. And a good way of storing the values of a table is by using a 2D array. So in this class, I'll create a 2D array of float. So this is a normal array. And if I add one more of this square brackets, it becomes a 2D array. I'll call this chart. And inside this, we are going to have a list of normal float arrays. So let me just use Ctrl D to duplicate these. Okay, so this is like a table. We have rows and we have columns. So I'm going to use comments to mark the type of the rows and the columns. So the first row is going to be normal. The second row is fire. So one important thing to note is that you have to use the same order that you specified in the type. So here I used normal fire water and I should use the same order while creating the table also. So the third type here is water. And I'll also use comments to mark the columns. So the first column is normal, second is fire, and third is water. So now we have a small table-like structure, and we can fill the values of this table into our 2D array. So in our table, we'll use 1 for the normal effectiveness, 0.5 for, for not very effective, and 2 for super effective, and 0 in case there is no effect. So the normal type has normal effectiveness on on normal fire and water types so we can just use one for the effectiveness no need to change any of these and let's look at the second row the fire type has normal effectiveness for normal it's not very effective on a fire pokemon and it's not very effective on a water pokemon so for normal it's going to be one for fire it's going to be 0 0.5 and for water, it's going to be 0.5. And similarly, we can fill the water row. So water has normal effectiveness on normal type. It has super effectiveness on fire type. So we'll change this to 2. And it's not very effective when performed on a water type. So I'll change this to 0.5. So you can go fill the values for all the types. So I've already filled the values of a few more types. So let me copy paste that. I haven't filled all the types yet because I'm too lazy for that. So next we need to make this static so that we can use this directly from the class without creating an object. So next I'll create a public function which is also static called get effectiveness. This function will return a float and will take the attack type and the defense type as the parameters. So in here, if the attack type or defense type is actually none, then I'll just return 
1. So next we need to get the effectiveness from our 2D array. So each element of our enum will have an integer value assigned to it. So none has 0, normal has 1, and fire has 2, and so on. So this is the reason why we had to fill our table in the same order. So in here, the index of normal is 0, index of fire is 1. So in the enum, normal is 1, and in the table, the index of normal is 0. So all we have to do is subtract 1 from the integer value of the enum. So first, I'll try to get the row. So remember, in the row, we have attack types. So I'll just get the integer value of the attack type and subtract it, it with 1. So similarly, I'll find the column by using the defense type. And finally, we just have to return chart of row and column. So now let's call this function when we are calculating the damage. So here I'll say float type equal to type chart dot get effectiveness. And for the attack type, I'll pass the type of the move. And for the different type, I will pass the type of the current Pokemon. So since we have two types for a Pokemon, we have to find the effectiveness of both and then multiply them. So I'll multiply this with the effectiveness of type 2. And all we have to do is multiply our type effectiveness to our modifiers. So now we are done with the type effectiveness. So next let's look at how to implement critical hits. So in Pokemon games, sometimes an attack becomes a critical hit and it will do double the damage of normal attacks. So the chance for a critical hit is actually 6.25 percentage. So we can generate a random number between 0 and 100. So random value will generate a float between 0 and 1. And I just have to multiply that with 100 in order to generate a value between 0 and 100. So if this is less than 6.25, less than or equal to actually, then we have a critical hit. So initially, I'll create a float called critical and set that to 1. And if this condition is true, I will set that to 2. And finally, we just have to multiply the value of critical with our modifier. So we are done with the implementation of type effectiveness and critical hits but we need to show that in the battle dialog so that users can know it was a critical hit or a super effective attack or something like that. So in the take damage function, instead of returning if the Pokemon fainted or not, I will return a class called damage details which will have all the details of the damage. So let's create that class. I created below the Pokemon class. So first thing we need a boolean to specify if the Pokemon fainted. I'll make this a property. And then we need a float for the critical. And finally we need a float for the type. So I'll create an object of the class here. I'll assign type and critical. And initially I'll just say fainted equal to false. So we need this function to return the damage details instead of a boolean. And if the HP is less than or equal to zero, then I'll just I'll just set fainted equal to true instead of returning true. And at the end of the function, I'll just return the damage details. I need to put a semicolon here. So now if we go to our battle system script, we have two errors here since we were ex expecting a boolean. So I'll just change that to damage details. And in here I'll check 
damage details dot fainted. Let me also do that for the enemy move. So finally, we need to show the damage details in the dialog box. So I'll create a function for that since the logic is actually same for enemy move and the player move. And this function will actually be a coroutine since we have to show dialogues. And I'll call this show damage details. And it will take a reference to damage details. So in this coroutine, if damage details dot critical is greater than one, then we'll show a critical hit in the dialog box. And next, if the effectiveness is greater than one, you know what, I, I just rename this variable to type effectiveness so that it is more readable. So you can just right click and rename it. And it will automatically rename all the references even in our Pokemon class. So if it's greater than one, then in the dialog we'll show it's super effective. Else if it's less than one, we'll just show it's not very effective. And finally, we need to call this coroutine after we take the damage and update the HP of the Pokemon. So let me call this from the player move coroutine also. And let's test the game. So if I attack with a fire move, You can see that it is super effective and the Bulbasaur fainted instantly. But I think we should wait for one second after showing it was super effective because user needs some time to read the message. So here after showing each dialog, I can wait for one second. But let's do this in a better way. So we can call the wait for seconds inside the type dialog function. So after showing the dialog, I'll just wait for one second by calling the new wait for second coroutine. And in the battle system, we actually did this after showing some of the dialogues. So let's just remove that, those. We have one in player move coroutine and another one in the enemy move coroutine. So now if I test the game, you can see that it waited for a second before showing Bulbasaur fainted. And similarly, you will get a critical hit once in a while. It is kind of hard to test because the rate of critical hit is very low. For, so just for testing purposes, you can actually increase the rate to something like 50. So you'll get a critical hit 50% of the time. So I'll stop the video here. And in the next video, we will add attack animations to our battle system. So if you think this video is helpful, consider subscribing to my channel and leave a like on the video. That will really help me a lot. So I'll see you in the next video.